Hey everybody, Jochen Haydn here, and I'm back with the 21 January 1942 turn 46 combat replay and analysis. Man, that last turn was a doozy. It was action-packed from start to finish. We had ships sinking, sub sinking, a big battle with the Kirubutai air wing, uh, uh, action in China. So I expect this turn to be pretty exciting as well. So stick around, grab a drink, and let's watch this thing together and see what goes down. Okay, now here we go. Got the volumes turned up so you guys can hear what I hear. Really anxious to see what goes down this turn. Alright, so he captures that base near Palembang. Just by virtue of being in proximity. Okay, got some mine sweeping going on here. Okay, so the K-7 takes a pot shot at a destroyer minesweeper. Just south of Bonato. But since we're in deep water, they are not able to respond. So, good attempt. Only two torpedoes wasted there. Oh, here we go. We got we got Japanese subs now off the coast of Australia, so it's it's happening. <sighs> it's happening now. Okay. So now we know they're here. So now we need to start getting up our ASW patrols because he's he's finally reached the coast of Australia. Oh yes, a K9 with the hit and a PB at Babel, and its sub escapes detection. All right, let's listen in and let's let's take a let's see what we hear. Yep, there's scratch one patrol boat. Okay, so the Japanese come on shore of Lolo Bato with an amphibious assault. They take a little bit of casualties, but nothing much. Take note, it's the first independent SNLF company. Okay, that uh, should be the nighttime. So now we're on the, the AM pulse. Hmm, what was that that I just saw? That was interesting. Okay, now we're sweeping some mines near, um, oh, check this out. Okay, so the rowboats have returned, guys. It's been a while since we've seen an RO boat from the Japanese, but he's definitely now interdicting the convoy lanes between uh, Australia and Port Moresby, which is just another signal to me that we need to not be going in there anymore. So, um, for whatever reason, the RO-67 elects not to attack this target, which I don't understand why. Because he could have even surfaced and used his gun on this guy. But whatever, I'll take that. It's just a reminder, though, that subs are alive and well out here for both he and I. Damn, how many mines does he have there? Okay, so the Grayling here, just uh, near Hokkaido, was engaged by one of his patrol boats, but nothing comes of it. Deep water. Oh. Okay, so the K, was that the K-17 takes a shot at Minato and misses. But it does appear that his subs also don't get, I'm sorry, his, his destroyer minesweeper here does not do anything with it either. So we waste two torpedoes at a DMS. Would have been great to take one down, but that's fine. At least we're active. Our subs are actually putting the pressure on right now, and that's what Lodric needs, pressure. More mines. How many mines did he put in there? Uh. Uh oh. Hmm. Man, a lot of ship sightings here. Okay. A lot of ship sightings. Hmm. Okay, so we got an air battle here, guys. So we have 14 Oscars coming in from Singapore versus whatever we're able to put up here at Palembang. Let's see how this goes. I can only hope that our Dutch pilots do something good here today. Okay. 
So we continue to get more aircraft up in the air right now. Alright, we got more aircraft coming in. So one thing about the Oscar that is good for us is that it's got really crap firepower. Not very big guns and not a lot of them. So while it's highly maneuverable and capable of doing damage to us, it it, it doesn't have a lot of killing power. So the best he's going to do is drive our planes back down, but probably won't kill a lot. So the nice thing here is that we're fighting over our own territory, okay? Um, any aircraft that we lose, the pilots will be fine. Any aircraft that he loses here that are, like, legitimately shot down are likely to end in a pilot being killed or captured. So we definitely have the, uh, the numbers right now. Ah, dang it. Oh, so we're diving in for once. We are diving in. It's not, not going so great. We have sufficient numbers here, but these Oscars are probably flown by some of his very best Japanese Army pilots. So, And then the Dutch pilots that we have are nothing to write home about. So we're diving on him now, though. So I would love it if we could, you know, turn this into something, but it, it just seems like he's damaging a lot of our our buffaloes and we're not getting much damage done to him. All right, I think we've kind of seen enough here. Let's go ahead and, and fast forward through this and see what, what comes of it. All right, so this combat summary is reporting one each destroyed, but I saw more red symbols through there than that. So I think these numbers are not going to be entirely accurate. We'll catch that on the actual intel report. But it does signal to us that he is now looking for a Palembang attack. Uh, I think we can expect way more sweeps going forward. So it may be time to move additional reinforcements to Palembang to put up a little more of a battle in the air. All right. And the sweep altitude that he comes in at is pretty low. But it did, it did, the fact that our cap was higher didn't seem to help much, which is disappointing to say the least. Okay. And we got the usual... Uh, daily sweeps and I think he's just waiting for us to do something here oh it's probably not gonna go well so you'll have to forgive me for using these bombers like this but I know that they have um, cameras but I don't think they work Unless you actually bomb, like you can't send them on a recon mission and the cameras will work. I think they have to do a bombing mission for the camera to take a picture. So I sent these in here um, to try to to take a picture. So I don't know if that's how this works or not. If anybody knows how these Lysanders work, by all means tell me. Because they do have a camera, but they, you know, how do you get it to work? Because I've sent them on recon missions so far and I've heard they've done nothing. So if you know how these work... Tell me if I'm doing this right or not, because I don't want to keep wasting these these aircraft like this. Okay, another sweep. Massive ra Okay, so now... Uh, he's just attacking the runway because he's trying to keep us from building up forts. Uh, is that the right thing to do at this point? I don't know. I think if he's trying to do something at Chang Shaw, he should maybe start b uh, bombing the actual ground forces here to disrupt them. Because this is just going to keep us from building forts. It's not going to really hurt the troops. He does get a lot of hits in here. But not as many as you would think with as many aircraft as he's committing here. I mean, 30, 30 
aircraft in in the escort plus another hundred plus 130 120 in the actual bombing raid thunderstorms that's probably why this is not that bad of damage okay some more coming in and these are coming in as fragments because the raid he sent out was just too big for the base they were coming from so they're coming in in, in pieces now okay it gets a little more damage in there okay now he's sending Sally's to try to destroy this unit that he displaced from here uh, a couple days ago. This unit is not long for this world by any means. Yeah, it. when you start seeing more destroyed than disabled units, that means that there's basically no di uh, enabled units left, and they're all disabled. So once they take a hit again, they're destroyed. So once you get into here, the unit is days from dying for good. Okay, another fragment of a raid. At Changsha. All right, now he's hitting Timolo, and he's hitting the airfield. Again, I to, for, to what end? I don't know. I don't think that's necessarily that helpful to him. Severe storms help us out. That reduces the accuracy of the bombers, so he only gets two hits on the runway. That's easily repaired. Big raid here at Sion. He's doing something here. I, I don't know what he's trying to do. I'm not too worried about the airbase hits, but the supply hits are definitely not good for us. Now he's going after this unit here again, which is a little perplexing to me. Does he know what's happening at Kukong? I don't know. I don't think he knows what's coming, man. All right. Uh, Timolo's hit again. Superficial damage at best. All right, and another raid on another fragmented raid coming in at Changsha. Get some hits in. All right, now these are coming out of Singapore. If you draw that red line, it's coming out of Singapore. So that red line tells you the direction of travel that the bombers are coming from, and you can use your your powers of deduction to determine what the base likely is. And from here, we know that Singapore is a large air base, so that's what this is. Mm, he's starting to recon uh, southern Sumatra now because I think he's planning for uh, for an invasion there. Another fragment coming into Changsha. Another nuisance raid on this unit on the road here. No damage. Okay, our turn. We're sending in the big boys. We got to soften this up. He does have a lot of escort here, but you know these are B-17Es and they have a lot of armor on them. Hopefully we can. Um, Actually, shoot a couple of these down and make some B-17 aces today. Hmm. Okay. Now I know. This is um. This is why Lodrick is afraid of these B-17s, and that's why we have this rule about the ten thousand feet. He's deathly afraid of the B-17 and what it can do to his his ground forces and his planes. And you're seeing it right now. Um. We're tanking this damage, but his planes are not. And uh, hopefully some of these aircraft that are taking this damage are going to end up as ops losses for him. So that, um, you know, he can't, he loses these airframes. It does appear that our B-17s are going to get in pretty good. Let's, let's find out. Light cloud cover, that's good for us. All right, we got to soften these guys up. Well, not exactly the best. I would have hoped for a little bit better of a raid than that. This is pretty not great. But we got some more coming in. Some more stragglers here. All right, and of course, they, they target the same unit. Um, and do more or less the same damage. Not the best. Okay, so we got we got another B-17 raid at Rabal because I thought I would uh, follow it up. Because why not? I know he's got ships there. And today he has way less clods up in the air than before. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Let's see if we see any red airplanes falling apart here. Nope. Definitely no uh, clear skies, guys. This is what we want to see. 
Clear skies means that we should be hitting stuff here. And we don't. Oh, that was kind of a waste of raid, guys. Um, don't know what to say. It was underwhelming. Um, my guess is that he took all the ships out of port because he knows that I'm doing a port strike. So uh, we do basically nothing here. We take seven damage aircraft. Um, we don't do anything really to him. So I think it's time to rest these B-17s for a bit because we're just not getting much done with this. That was a pretty eventful uh, um, AM phase, so let's see what happens now. Let's see what happens here in the PM phase. A lot of ships in the uh, out there near Sumatra. All right, so <laughs> yeah, this isn't probably. Great. Probably not great. Ugh. So, yeah, we basically got all these guys wiped out. So I really need some help here on how to use these aircraft better. I don't think this is the way, but I I'm trying to get them to do photo reconnaissance, but I don't know how to do it without them bombing. But we're not going to be able to bomb like this. So help me out, guys. All right, this is probably not going to go well for our SP3s. Uh, let's just go ahead and get through it, because I'm trying to soften up Kukong, if you know what I'm saying. Looks like we take a lot of losses getting in. All right, so we lose at least three destroyed, probably more. It does not appear that we cause any damage to the Japanese. Hopefully we disrupted something. Big goose eggs over with our bombing rates today, all over the place. Well, ball was a bust. This was a bust. B-17s at Kukong were a bust. So, okay, so we're done with air combat now. So now is the very pivotal, important battle that I'm looking for. I'm looking for Kukong to be a complete blowout. Bet I'll take that too. Oh, I'll take that too. That's awesome. So the KA-17 said, yeah, we're not done yet. So it took a shot at this uh, DMS W-14. Let's listen carefully and see if we get anything out of this. Yes, we do. <sighs> okay, we got another one, guys. Dutch subs are getting it done today. That's awesome. Well done, guys. Okay, in the meantime, though, he does land at Ketapeng with some more amphibious troops. Okay, so we should be getting into the ground combat, guys. Uh, so here's what we're doing. I went all in at Kukong. All the chips are in. Oh. Oh, man. Um, okay, I wasn't expecting this. So he's actually attacking us at Changsha. Um, and I, I'm a little concerned as to what how this is going to go. Um and this is very indicative. Take a look at this. Kwangtung Army, Korea Army. So this is absolute tru truth proof that he's brought over tons of units from Korea, from Manchukuo, from Mongolia. And he's funneling them all down in here. And he's trying to punch through at Changsha. I don't know how this is going to go, guys. Uh, I've done my best to reinforce Changsha. But I, I don't really know what he's got here right now. And he's got a lot of tanks, so... I'm going to fast forward through this and let's see how this goes. And I'll tell you right now, if we lose here, I am in trouble. Because this is the linchpin, the center point of my entire China defense strategy. And if I if I fall through in the middle, we're... I, I don't even have a good answer as to what's going to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this. And I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed that we can hold out here. Because I, I just don't know how this is going to go. This will probably take some time to resolve. Oh, well. it, 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 it looks good. Oh, I think this is looking actually pretty good. Alright. 
Oh, wow. Check this out. He... He attacked us with less? Than... Uh, what? Wait a minute. So... Okay, let's look at this, guys. He attacked us here with less AV than we have. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? That that's that's perplexing to me. He had to know what we had there, right? He's been bombarding us. Okay, uh, right now I'm gonna tell you on paper this does not look like a good idea because here's why: he's coming in with less assault value. Um, we have fortifications, which he does take down one level. Um, but when you look at the adjusted, look at the look at the split here. It's almost four to one. We have terrain. We have forts. He has nothing. All right. Drum roll, please. <gasps> Whoa. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. This is awesome. We got him. Guys, this is this is bad. Uh, let's take a look at this. 552 destroyed squads. Engineers, guns, vehicles versus our losses. This is this is a blowout. Oh my god. This is like almost five to one casualty rate. That was a very bad decision to attack there. Especially with that A V level. Why would why would he do that? Wow. Look at all the stuff that he's got here. Assaulting units. Look at all of that. And even with all that, it wasn't enough. That is incredible. This is almost as bad as the 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 Sion thing that Lodric wanted to redo. Um, th this is just as bad, and this is even more critical to me because even if we lost up here, I would still have somewhere to fall back to and maintain a northern flank. If we lost to Changsha, we got nothing. We're we're, we're done. So this is even more of an important battle than even up there. And we just won this convincingly. This is going to <sighs> Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay, so this is done. We still have a very important battle at Kukong, but this was huge for us, guys. Oh, man. Okay, let's, let's keep going. Okay, Japanese bombardment at Pinsiong. I why, I don't know. I don't know what he's trying to do here. We actually take no casualties, and he takes more, and we get a nice little snapshot as to kind of what he's got there. So we hold the ground here, too, and he's not getting through here with what he's got now. He's going to have to dramatically reinforce this base if he has any chance of punching through. Granted, this is not going to show you everything, but it's going to give you an idea of kind of what he's got going on here. And, and we have no threat at Pinsiong right now. <sighs> Japanese bombardment. Okay, so now he's bombarding up here at um, at at the big base there. At, you know, our big train at south of uh, Sion, where we previously had done a redo because he didn't like how it went. This time around, we we don't take a lot of casualties here, and he, this is very sustainable. And these numbers will not get it done for him. Okay, he will not win with this disparity. It needs to be more. So this is just telling us that we're good to go up here for now, indefinitely. <sighs> okay, now he's getting frustrated. He's getting super frustrated in, in, in uh, the Philippines. So he's going to start bombarding us to death here. Notice how he splits up his divisions too. See, see what he's doing here? He's splitting up his divisions because it hel I, allegedly, and I don't, I don't know if this is true or not. I need to look into this more. I'm, I'm not certain. But what I've been told is if you split up your, your units into thirds like this, individually they, they recover faster. I, I'm going to go on the forums and ask if that's true because if it's not true, he's wasting his time doing it. If it is true, I need to start doing it myself, right? But uh, regardless, um, we take superficial casualties, and he actually loses a vehicle. So this was a, a inconclusive bombardment but we do get to see exactly what he's got what he needs to do here is a dang shock attack i don't know what he's waiting for he's got the numbers to to do this uh, he needs to just push the button already i don't tell him i said that but I, clark is ready to fold Ooh, okay so he's coming in at madan 
I don't see these units being able to with withstand this. And there it is. All right, he's going to start rolling up the coast of, of uh, Sumatra in the north until he takes Sabang. And then that's lights out for northern Sumatra. Well, he got one win. That's good. We take a ton of casualties, and this is going to hurt our army loss points. All right, Ketapang, he already landed here. This is going to fall. All right, guys, here we go. This is the big thing. This is what we got to win here. We have to win here. There's no question about it. I'm going to fast forward. Are we going to do it or not? Dang it. We did not get it done. We did not get it done, guys. It's not the result that I wanted. Look at these look at these odds. Three to one and we still don't win. I don't understand that. How do we not win this at a three to one advantage? Mm. This is gonna really hurt us. It must be the artillery he's got. We're just gonna have to wear him down. Dang it. I was hoping for something better there, but you know, it it is what it is. Still in you know, we have some other things to be happy about. And we'll talk about those in the analysis here. We'll see if we get any reinforcements. You know, come to think of it, where did Akito Butai go? We didn't even see them this turn. Okay, we got some battleships coming in. Some squadrons that are merging. A couple of the units showing up. Okay. This is just units that I've been transferring around more or less. These are new. All right, let's let's analyze. Okay, we're back and let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, we'll start with aircraft losses for today. Um, so it wasn't such a great day for us. 18 for us versus 9 for him. Definitely not the ratio that I want to be seeing here. He lost 7 Oscars in combat over... Um, over Palembang, and in, in exchange, we lose five uh, Dutch Buffaloes. So, five to seven, not exactly great. You know, uh, we lose six SB3s on a kind of a wasted raid on Kukong, so we're definitely not getting through to the, we're not getting anything done bombing there with those guys. So, it's about time to send these guys back to, re to rest. We lost five Lysanders because I don't know how to use them at all. And I need to spend operations with those because I'm just wasting them. He loses two zeros today to ops losses, probably due to tangling with my bombers. We lose one B-17E shot down and one PBY-5 lost to ops. So there you go, 18 to 9. Looking at the top pilots, we had five KIA today. And I'm sure uh, just about all of those were the, the uh, Chinese bomber pilots. Maybe one of the B-17 pilots too. It's hard to say. Uh, we can actually take a look at that. So if we look at... Oh, okay, not there. Let's see here. we got to scroll through a lot here. Okay, so it does not appear that we lost any B-17 pilots this turn. That's cool. Uh, taking a look at the army loss points here, uh, we ticked up, but so did he substantially. Obviously, um, this is due to the failed attack on Changsha, which we'll talk about. For this last turn, we suffered no ship losses, but 
Lodric cannot say the same. So we had some Dutch subs on a rampage this turn, and he lost the Destroyer Minesweeper W14 and the Patrol Boat Kashiwa Maru. So these Kashiwa Maru is one of the better ASW Patrol Boats he's got because they have an ASW rating of 3, which is above average for your average Japanese Patrol Boat. The W14, uh, these are always good because they can serve as convoy escorts. They can do minesweeping. They can do a lot of stuff. So... Uh, and he doesn't have a ton of these. Like, once they're gone, they're gone. So, us thinking a uh, DMS is definitely a, a good day. All right. So, we actually pick up quite a bit here. If you look at the uh, Allied versus Japanese score, something has flipped in our favor for whatever reason. I don't know why. We've gained almost 300 points on him this turn. Uh, again, I, I, I don't know exactly what's driving that. Unless one of our one of our very important bases possibly picked up. Oh, I know what it is. We increased the size of the base at Rangoon, and that increased the value of the base for us by quite a bit. So that gave us an extra 300 points, which puts us back in the lead as of January 22nd, 1942, which I'm happy about. Now, granted, if we lose Rangoon, this is going to flip way in the other direction. But for now, we're maintaining a lead, and I'm happy to maintain a lead. Every day we're in the lead is a day that he has to work harder to catch up. So overall, not a horrible day. It could have been better, but it definitely could have been worse. So let's talk about it. We'll start in China. Up here, uh, we're holding steady at uh, Sion. He did a little bombardment attack, but as you can see, it's not really slowing us down. We have all the supplies we need in the hex, so he can keep bombing away all he wants. It's not going to... Uh, affect us. Our supply lane from Rangoon is alive and well and we continue to pump supplies into China every turn down the Burma Road so uh, supply is not an issue for us at that location. Uh, looking here at Changsha our units are all fully in supply as well which is only going to help us recover our assault value quicker. Uh, the base is showing low on supply because it's dumping its supply into the units itself. So this will continue to recover. Um, but what's most important is that the actual units are in supply. So he took major casualties at Changsha, and hopefully it dissuades him from doing any more death stack ops. That being said, he's bringing in even more units still. Eight here, nine here, three here. So he's not out of troops yet, not by a long shot, but he lost a lot here this last turn. So we're going to hold a chain shot for the time being, and I actually see a pathway forward to retaking Hen Yang in the next couple turns. So I'm looking forward to getting that done because we really need to. Uh, unfortunately, down here at Kukong, we were not successful with our shock attack. I really thought we would have enough AV to take it, but I guess all the guns he's got, all the other vehicle, whatever he's got there is just too much for us. So we're going to have to chip away at him. So... Um, I'm going to take a look at the the quality of the troops and how badly disrupted they are. But we're going to keep chipping away. We're going to keep attacking because right now he's still cut off. And he's going to be out of supply soon. And we won't because we have a supply lane open and he doesn't. So uh, we'll just keep working at it. And then we'll, you know, we'll get in there and we'll take it. A little activity down here in uh, Hong Kong. we got a Dutch sub on station. Actually, let me change that. K10 is at uh, HK. Hopefully, we can pick up an easy kill here. He did a bombardment attack at Clark Field. I feel like he's got everything he needs to take this place. I don't know what he's waiting for. He just needs to push the button and shock attack this thing and be done. Because Clark is ready to fold. All right, looking over here in uh, Burma and India, all that stuff, everything's looking good. Uh, we're about to have another supply convoy enter this hex uh, next turn. Uh, we have two AMCs sweeping these mines at Rangoon, and if we take a look at the combat reports, they've got seven mines down, uh, nine mines, 11. Ah, he had a lot of mines in there, guys. One mine... So about 30, uh, 30 mines swept so far. I think that's probably most of them. You can tell when you're when he's almost out of mines when the, the quantity of mines being swept 
drops down into single digits and it's one mine at a time. That means the density of the field is basically gone. So we should be able to get a ship, uh, a convoy into here without too much effort. Uh, I doubt we're going to hit any more mines. And by the time uh, this convoy does roll through, these these two AMC should have this hex completely swept. So Rangoon is back open for business and for supply. I got another uh, 30 coming in. And I've got another 100,000 just making its way down the coast here. So um, all these supplies are going into China and keeping us alive up there. All right. So I did evacuate aircraft off of Port Blair. These guys are going to be heading into Rangoon next turn or the next two turns. And we can reconstitute them here at Rangoon and get back in business with that. So that's definitely a good, uh, a good development. Looking at Malaya, uh, he did... Uh, didn't he take something this last turn? I thought he had an attack here, but maybe he didn't. Uh, regardless, he is in Temelo, and I'm sure that these troops that he's got here are quite powerful. So uh, look look for a big battle here at Temelo next turn. One thing we do got going for us is good terrain. We got Jungle Rough, and we got Size 3 Forts. So let's hope that we can... Um, Let's hope we can do what we need to do here and, and withstand for a while and slow him down. We also have uh, blockers on these two hexes here. Actually, we're going to stop these guys. The next ones are going to continue towards Kota Baru. We're just trying to clog up the road here. So delaying action in Malaya, and it's buying us time for, for Burma, basically. Uh, in Sumatra, the action is really picking up. He just took Madan, and he's can continue daisy chaining up the coast here. I'm gonna go ahead and start moving these guys back to Sabang for our final stand. Set all the march. Future objective objective is Sabang. Set all, and they're all going to Sabang. And then once he takes Sabang, that is it for us up here. I'm still trying to get this aircraft fixed up so we can get it out of here, but it's taking forever. Uh, down here in Palembang, uh, it's getting a little spicier. This is the AMC. It somehow got away from us, and he's got another one trying to come in, but now we're ready for him. He did take Montauk last turn, and we also had a, a pretty significant air battle at Palembang where he swept us with fighters from Singapore. Uh, I expect next turn we're going to see even more aircraft coming at us, probably from this little guy I just noticed right now. It's another uh, little mini Kido Butai. Uh, if he were smart, he'd take the aircraft and sweep Palembang and sweep us clear. And then that opens it up to start bombing. So I give Palembang a week or two before he's coming in and he's taking it out. He's, he, controls, he controls the waves here. A lot of activity, though, as you can see. We got ships here, ships here. I'll check this out. A battleship unit heading southeast which is this way okay so we have carriers heading southwest and battleships heading southeast all out of singapore okay also out of singapore we spotted a cruiser task force and another cruiser task force here so a lot of ship activity all through the dutch east indies now and i'm really curious to see which way he goes hopefully our dutch subs in the uh, strait of malacca can put up a good fight and slow some of these guys down but we don't really have a lot of assets down here to do much. So, you know, maybe we'll be lucky and he'll trip into a mine or something, but I doubt it. Also looking at the Dutch East Indies, we have this. We have three task forces loaded with stuff. I don't know exactly where they're going, but um, they appear to be all heading west. Which, what's west? Surabaya. So... I don't really know where they're going and what their plans are, but we need to be ready for... This could be the invasion that we've been waiting for for some time of Surabaya. And I'll tell you right now, if he wants it, he'll he'll take it because we just don't have anything in there to stop it. Uh, one thing I can do is try to get some of these ships out while possible. Unfortunately, I do have two ships in the um, dry dock that... Or shipyard, one one of them that aren't in a condition to leave yet. So we risk losing these two ships here if he's really committed to invading Surabaya now. I still don't know what's on these ships, but 
it won't take much to take Sir Bayek because we've basically pulled out of there now. The train is clear train. It's just too hard to defend. And even though we've got mines, if he wants to start bombarding this, there's not much we can do to stop it. So this could be the dreaded invasion of Serbia. Let's keep an eye on this and see what happens. We did have some success, however, here near Babel. And we had some success here at Monado. And that's where we took out the patrol boat and the destroyer minesweeper. So a couple options uh, could happen here. A, this could be a major invasion force uh, aimed at Palembang and Java. Or B, he could be sending these guys down to start convoy raiding uh, stuff down here at Perth. Because he's been down this way before, and it's been a while since he's visited us here. So we need to be prepared for that, that possibility. So we'll see what happens this turn, but, you know, I need to start watching this closely. If I see any of these units go south here, then it's time for us to start pulling pulling all these task forces off because I don't want to lose these ships needlessly. We are unloading a ton of supply here. Fuel, lots of fuel, lots of supply. Uh, we're getting some into Albany too, quite a bit of fuel. And this is fuel that's desperately needed for Australia because we were low, low, low on fuel. But as you can see here, hopefully this fuel should start flowing towards Sydney. Um, which it does not appear to be yet, but it will. Yeah, we'll start getting fuel flowing out this way soon. But it's got a, it's got a long way to travel. And some of the roads near Perth aren't ideal. But we're going to get the fuel we need into um, Australia and we'll be fine. So definitely something to keep an eye on over here. Okay, where are these guys going? Where are these guys going? Okay, so looking over here at Nemea, uh, this is the Keto Butai. Okay, where they're going, couldn't tell you. But it's saying northeast, which would be this direction, which could mean Luganville. So that's why I've got my ships heading out and away. So I don't know if he's actually going to hit Luganville or not, but we definitely have eyes on him now. And what I would love to see him do is move out this way. Uh, not too far from Guadalcanal, we also spotted this little guy. Now, it's saying it's a bunch of AOs, and I don't believe that for a second. There's no good reason for him to be sending AOs out here unless he's looking to do some sort of meetup here and refuel these guys and then send them back down. But, you know, he's still got aircraft that needs to be replaced. So I don't, I don't know if that's what his intent is or not. But we're, we've got eyes on this now. It may be worthwhile to, I don't know, send some subs this way, you know? I think we're going to redirect some subs over here just in case. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm wondering if he's trying to refuel Kido Butai to keep it in range. Because his destroyers do have short range, and they can't be out that long. Hmm. This is definitely causing an issue, because I need this guy out of here. Because he's disrupting my convoys right now. Hmm. I don't know. It's not looking good, guys. I, I don't know what he's doing. Keep an eye on this. A lot of activity. Look at that amount of ships that he's got in Rabal. 56, and we couldn't hit a single one? That's crazy. Well, I thought I was going to pull off my bombers from Rabal, but I'm not. It's just too much there. We're going to we're gonna get lucky eventually and hit something good, so we're going to go back. I'm pretty sure we're going to go back. Other than that, I think that's basically it for this turn. <sighs> He's definitely stepping up his activities in Dutch East Indies, and I'm a little concerned about it because I just don't know what we've got here that's going to put a stop to this. And then we've got this carrier task force here, which has the capability of doing immense damage to wherever it goes. That could be a problem for us. It could be the death knell of, the, of Java. And then we have moving up this way. Still waiting for another raid into uh, the Bay of Bengal. But until he does, we have time to get more supplies in. So a lot going on. Um, next turn should be very insightful. We're going to try to resolve this situation at Kukong, if at all possible. 
uh, I think we did buy some time here at Changsha to get more troops into Henyang as well. So that's what we got. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please come over to Discord. If you're not there, you're missing out on a lot of good activity, a lot of good conversation. Uh, me and Lobdrick both have private rooms, so if you're a fan of the Japanese in this campaign, you can talk to him directly, and I can't see what he's saying. I can't see what's being discussed there. And if you're on my side, you can come into the Allied chat, and no one on the Japanese side can see what we're saying except for us. So if you're not there, you're missing out. That's all I'm going to tell you. Catch you in the next one.